let's start. Um, so hi everyone. So my name is Quentin. I work in the Linux user space team at Facebook, um, and we're gonna discuss a bit about IP tables. Uh, more specifically, what's called BP filter, uh, which some of you might know. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so we'll discuss about what's BP filter and what's its relation to IP tables and what we can do with it. Oh, sorry. Okay, so first thing, what's IP tables? Uh, so I'm going to talk about IP tables a lot, but it will mean different things. Uh, we'll have that filter which is the filtering framework in the kernel. Uh, we'll have NF table, which is a front end um, for NetFilter, uh, which use NetLink to communicate with NetFilter in the kernel. We'll have also IP tables legacy, which is kind of the same thing, like a front end for NetFilter, but the difference is it communicates with the kernel using getsocopt, uh, syscall. And we'll also have IP tables, which is the new version of IP, IP table, which use the NetLink interface like NF table. Um, is that clear so far? Because it's a lot of different things that sounds the same. Um, so NetFilter is a standard package filtering framework in the kernel. So if you want to filter something, you go through NetFilter. Um, I guess most people here use BPF to do that, but it's specific to this room, and I guess usually it's just NetFilter and IP table and NF table. Um, it's, for example, the default uh, firewall in Fedora, and most of the distribution, like FirewallD, for example, it's using NetFilter. Um, so NetFilter is fine, but it's slower than BPF. Um, but on the other end, it's way easier to use. You don't have to write any code or learn C or whatever. You just write um, the IP table syntax, and it should work. Uh, and there the BP filter story starts. So it started years ago in 2018 with a patch series from Alexei with change from David Miller and Daniel Bokman, uh, which is named BP filter, but it's not really filtering, it's just a user mode helper. So basically a kernel module that will, when loaded, um, start a user space program, communicate with it using pipes. And that's about it at this point. Um, then, at some point, uh, Dmitry Banshikov, um, I may be buttering that, but sorry if you hear Dmitry, um, has been continuing the series, uh, submitting a V1, then a V2, which is effectively uh, filtering packets. So, what happened is that all the getsocopt call coming from IP tables with the filtering rules inside were cut by BP filter and were translated into a BPF program. Uh, so effectively what happened is that it speeds up, it speeds up, sorry, uh, the packet filtering uh, coming from IP tables by creating BPF programs. So it's much faster. And the good side of that is you don't need to change IP table. Uh, every change is in the kernel or in the user mode helper. So it's transparent. You don't have to update IP table. You don't have to, to change anything. You keep your same rule, and it's, it's suddenly faster than it was before. Um, there are benchmarks of that kernel module at the time um, in the patch series from Dmitry and in on, a, on a Stilum blog post I found yesterday. Uh, I don't have much benchmark right now because it's not relevant anymore. So the old one were based on XDP programs uh, to, to represent the filtering rules. Uh, and BP filter evolved a bit, so it's now based on TC and soon to be on the BPF net filter um, hooks. Uh, and that's the point where I joined uh, BP filter, been working on it. So I've been working on a V3 of the patch series uh, as Dmitry stopped working on it. Uh, I submitted it in December, but then at some point we found out that we have to find a new home for BP filter. So it's currently still in the kernel tree, at least part of it, and the patch series applied to the kernel tree. But the issue with that is um, it's a bit slow to get it to get reviewed and merged. Um, it's user space code, and I guess kernel people have better things to do than review user space code, which, is, which makes sense, you know? Uh, and the other thing is that uh, some use cases uh, are not possible with BP filter as a kernel module. 
uh, and we have specific internal use cases uh, in which PP filter as a user, user space um, tool would be uh, more interesting. Um, so at some point, BP filter has been um, moved to uh, a GitHub repository uh, under, under the Facebook organization on GitHub. Um, and I've been working on moving that to a kernel module into um, a user space um, service daemon. If you go to the repository, it's still a kernel module, an Atop3 kernel module, so you can build it, use it, and whatever. Um, but my fork currently uh, has BP filter as a user space um, daemon. Um, and what it can do right now is uh, you can translate from a set of IP table rules, you can translate that to specific uh, specific PPF programs. You can have the counters. Uh, I also have a proof of concept of uh, IP tables, which is modified to call BP filter directly. So from IP table, it would generate a PPF program and insert it uh, into the kernel and attach it to the, the right hook. Um, let's dive a bit more inside of it. So that's basically what's an IP table table. Uh, that's what's sent from uh, user space by IP table when you add a rule. If you add just one rule to your rule set, it's gonna send the whole set of rules for all, uh, all the chain in a table every time to the kernel back and forth. So a table will be, for example, the filter table. So you want to filter packets, it's gonna be inside the filter table. And inside of that, you have chains, which are the hook where the, ru the rules are attached. So input, forward, output, and, and so on. Inside the chain, uh, you have the rules, which are basically used to match packets. And each rule will have zero or more, or more matches and a target. The target will be the decision whether to drop or accept the packet. So as you can see, it's a uh, lot of layers uh, a lot of things um, inside each other. Um, and that's basically what we want to receive from IP table on BP filter. So when you do IP tables with your rule um, behind, it's gonna send the table and all the chains and the rules inside. And BP filter will receive that and convert it to the right BPF programs. From a, a very high level point of view, uh, BP filter is the orange part. So we'll have the lib BP filter on the left, which is what will be linked to the client. Um, let's say IP tables, for example. Um, you have different parts inside the lib BP filter, uh, a generic um, set of API, uh, which will send and receive um, BP filter request and response, uh, which is format agnostic. It's just data you send and you receive uh, to and from the daemon. And then depending on the client, you have a client-specific API. Uh, for IP table, for example, it's gonna be the IPT something call. So you're gonna be able to use the IP table specific structures, not to convert that to anything, just use this structure inside IP tables and send it to BP filter, which we're gonna, which will, sorry, which will um, do the translation and try to understand what you're trying to do and convert that properly. And on the daemon side, um, you will receive the set of rules from a Unix domain socket. You will have different parts, so the front end, which is coupled to the client, kind of. So for IP tables, you have an IP table front end, which translates the set of rules in the IP table format inside a, into, sorry, into a BP filter specific format. So then BP filter can work on a generic format. Um, whatever the client is. Uh, the generator will then convert that set of generic rules in the BP filter format into BPF programs. So depending what you're trying to do, you're gonna have more than one program. Um, if you're trying to create a new rule for the input filter on IP table, you will have one program for the input filter on IP tables. Uh, if you had a rule for the forward um, chain, it's gonna be a different program. So all the, um, all the rules for one IP table hook will result, on, will result in one BPF program. And le, the third part of the daemon will be the management part, which is basically 
um, loading, attaching, managing the lifetime of the DPF programs. Um, and it will also be used for contest management. So I don't know if that's um, known or not, but when you define rules in IP tables, you'll be able to have contests specific to each rule, which are the number of packets processed and the number of, the number of bytes processed by this specific rule. Uh, and so BP filter supports the contest. Um, um, can I? Sorry. Yeah, I had a question to your previous slide. Um, so for the net for the net, net filter case, you're basically using the new BPF net filter infrastructure, or not yet? Oh, okay. Yeah. So so far, it's TC, mm -hmm. uh, which has its own set of issues because uh, if you look at IP tables, you have the input and forward, for example, and the difference is packets that are targeted to a different host go through the forward hook, right. and there is no distinction of that on TC. Uh, so having the new BPF net filter program type is a uh, a good point for me on that because I don't have to have a, a fib lookup um, inside each program. Yeah. Uh, I had a couple of questions. So one of them would be um, so around BP filter. So that's like a, a, a daemon. So obviously it can restart. So there's kind of a state property. Oh, like a, does it push everything to the kernel? And then when you restart, it needs to restore from the kernel. Like how? Like let's say uh, I add a bunch of rules and then yep. that daemon needs to restart and then I want to add one more rule. That has semantics in the way that you run it with IP tables because everything's persisted through the kernel. So is does the BPF, BP filter sort of do some restore or store to disk and restore or something like that when you restart that agent? Not really because there's no need for that okay. uh, from IP tables point of view because IP tables will generally, like when you start your computer is gonna push all the rules um, the fact that the daemon can restart during runtime without um, calling BP, uh, IP table restore, for example, is a different issue, which is not yet handled. Uh, but yeah, eventually that needs to be fixed. Okay. And um, maybe one other, I was curious about the Unix domain socket. What, what the API is looking like there? Is it closer to sort of a, the IP tables text based interface that, that maybe users are familiar with, or is it kind of there's a new? Um, like a definition, I guess gRPC or you know what, what kind of uh, uh, it's just the binary data that binary is sent. Um, so for IP table, you have the strict IPT replace, which contain the, all the table stuff I've shown, uh, and that's binary inside IP tables. So there is a, a request creature on BP filter side, which is filled with that data and received on the other side, and um, BP filter know it's coming from IP table, so it knows that data is a strict IPT replace and can then understand what's inside. So w why do you need a daemon at all? Why don't you use like uh, IP tables tools which is stateless? You, you, you receive something, you apply something, and you die. Uh, because you still have the contents to manage, for example. So you need to keep metadata about what's going on and where the programs are loaded and attached. The counters are in the kernel, right? So No, they're not. I mean, the counters are so from, from the daemon, starting from the daemon, everything after that has no relation to IP table or to net filter. So the counters are a BPF map, which is updated from the BPF programs. So if, uh, if you don't have any daemon, like a shared library, just a shared library, you can translate and attach the BPF program perfectly fine. But when IP table will try to add a new rule, you have no idea which map you are using, which program are already loaded, and like what's going on, basically. So you, you can probably pin them to BPFFS and have some state on the file system to kind of recover. Uh, uh, maybe. Yeah, probably, but it's way simpler this way. <laughs> and do you, like from the from a user point of view, do you basically have your IP tables? user space binary and then link against the lib bp filter and it will do everything in the background? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So okay. the, the main point was that, so I've been discussing with Florian uh, Westphal working on net filter and IP tables. And one of the main points was that there is no change, not much change to do on IP tables, for example, if it's something I want to integrate. Um, all the real processing is done by the daemon. So you don't have to do anything, you just push your 
apply on specific data to it, and it's going to end up everything. Um, yeah, so coming to what I would like to do now. So there is the patch series, as you said, from uh, Florian Westphal, uh, which introduced the BPF net filter program type, uh, which allows BPF program to be attached to the original net filter and IP table hook. So only a few, I think a couple of hooks are supported right now. Um, but that's something I would like to, to support as well because it solves a lot of issues on my side. Um, but the, the step to get there um, is that I need to, uh, to add support for a new, what I call BBF flavor. Uh, in that case, what it means is that I have TC, for example, and TC program acquired a specific, receive a specific argument when they start, and they will return a specific um, code for accept or drop or whatever. Uh, and TC program are loaded and attached to the kernel in a specific way. Uh, and so I have a set of functions to support TC, which I define as a BPF flavor. And the BPF net filter um, program types is different. So the argument passed to the program is different. The return code, I haven't looked into in deep, but I guess are not exactly similar. Um, so I need to support that new BPF flavor. Uh, and the other thing is that um, this program requires um, DNPTR to be used. Uh, so far, I'm using direct package access, uh, so I need to go through a DNPTR function inside the BPF bytecode to, to use the BPF netfilter program type. Uh, and a few more things about uh, adding support for NF tables. So that means basically adding, not this one, sorry, uh, adding a new um, client type to libbp filter for NF table because the data structure is different. Uh, I need to add a new front end for an table also. And when that's done, um, the rest comes for free. Uh, once the data is translated from the NF table format into the BP filter format, uh, everything should work fine, like in theory. Um, and a few more things like the user defined chain, which are um, for IP tables. So you have the chains, which are input chain or forward chain, for example, and you have the rules inside. And the user can say, I want to define a new chain, which when we go through, is gonna log the packet. Um, and that chain, you can jump into it from any other rule in any other chain. Um, and supporting that in the way BP filter works right now requires a bit more work, because what's happened right now is that all the rules are mapped to some BPF bytecode. So literally, like sequentially, you go through each rule into a, inside the BPF program. Uh, and adding access to the user-defined chain means we have to jump somewhere to process the chain and then come back to it and continue the processing. And also, yeah, extending the IP tables and NF table feature. Um, IP tables can do a lot of things, and so far I support like filtering by um, source, destination IP, ports and protocol, uh, which are the basic criteria inside each rule. Uh, but you have a lot of more matches available that I would like to support as well. And yeah, that's oh, sorry. That's about it. Um, if you have any question, more question. Um, what is the plan with the user mode BP filter infrastructure? Do you? Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I guess it should be removed at some point. Um, I'm not gonna use it. If anyone wants to do the same thing, but still in the Canon module, feel free to go, but I don't think it's useful anymore. Um, and long term, do you plan to support anything that IP tables has, or just something enough for Facebook to, or like wh what is the long term story for? Um, that's a good question. Um, so we have use case internally uh, of team maintaining their own BPF program for firewall and stuff. Uh, and that ideally would be a solution for them not to have to maintain a whole BPF program. Uh, when it comes to IP tables, uh, it's like the set of features of IP tables is very wide. 
and the set of fields of an F table is even bigger. Um, so I guess it depends on what's actually used, uh, probably more specifically um, for us in the first time. Uh, if someone wants to use BFI filter and tell me I want to use that, I'm happy to, to help, you know. Um, but yeah, so far it's driven by getting something that works fine and what use case we have. Okay, because I guess from, from our point of view, we mostly remove type B tables everywhere from the fleet, except one place where we actually use NF tables. And for me, if, if the back end of this NF tables is BPF, it's easier to support because we have like a lot of BPF expertise internally. Mm -hmm. And now we, I guess, we have the only option is to support NF tables, which is things no one understands. It's like yeah. I, I guess at some point we'll probably check out what, what you have and try to switch, convert. And yeah, I, I understand. And so so far the front end is um, IP tables and eventually NF tables because that's how it started basically. Um, but we have way to define filtering rules for the containers um, internally. And ideally we would have a new front end for that kind of rule definition. Uh, so the purpose is also to support things that are not supported by IP tables. Um, I think about like we have set of hosts inside um, what we call a, an SMCT, which is a naming, a name domain which contains different hosts. Um, and we would like also to, to be able to filter by SMCT, so by pool of hosts, which is not possible on IP tables unless you do every rule for every IP. Thank you very much. Thank you.